And now we'll say some things about atmospheric pressure. The air around you exerts forces on everything that it comes in contact with, and it exerts forces on you. Right now, all of these air molecules are moving, and they, they hammer away, and each little air molecule hitting exerts a force, and the total force is approximately 14.7 pounds of force on every square inch. That amount is called one atmosphere. That's, and that's a measure of pressure, pounds per square inch. One atmosphere, or sometimes abbreviated one ATM. So we can measure pressure in pounds per square inch, as we've seen, or in atmospheres. And, and one atmosphere is the same thing as 14.7 14 pounds per square inch. Or, or we can measure pressure in newtons per square meter, which is called a pascal. So different possible measurements for pressure. But think about this number for a second, 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's kind of an amazing number. If you picture one square inch, it's about this big. I'll just draw one here, and it might appear a little bit different size on your computer monitor. And that's OK. I'm just drawing a little a guess at a square inch. But that little square I drew is about one inch by one inch. So on the computer monitor right now, the atoms of air are hitting it and exerting 14.7 pounds of force on that square inch and on every square inch. If you look at your hand, your hand is several inches across and a few inches wide. The total force, if there's 14.7 pounds of force per square inch, there's a total of force of probably a couple of hundred pounds on your hand right now, which raises the question, why don't you feel it? And again, it's kind of like the pressure under water. You're not being squashed from the top and the bottom or from one side to another like a, a trash compactor or something you're, it's being exerted in all directions and the tissues in your body respond by exerting the same force back outward in, in, in all directions so you don't really feel it you're just compressed more than you would be otherwise now you're not actually squeezed into a smaller space you're just under pressure from the air around you but you're not compressible you can't be squeezed into a smaller space but the air is. Air is what we call a compressible fluid. Exerting more pressure on the air squeezes it into a smaller space. Like when you pump up the tires on your bicycle or on your car, you're increasing the pressure and you're squeezing a lot of air into that little space. Because air is compressible, it ends up being more dense at low altitudes. I'm going to draw the earth here, and you can draw this. So this is the ground, and up above it we'll draw the air. And I'm just going to draw little dots to represent air molecules. And we'll just draw a representative sample. In reality, there are billions or trillions of air molecules. The atmosphere contains just uh, actually billions and trillions is far too small a number. But there are more air molecules than I can count or draw. But I'm going to draw some little dots here to represent air. Now, to make this accurate, you need to draw the dots a lot more closely spaced down at the bottom. And what this represents is that down in the lower altitudes, closer to the Earth, the air is more dense. And this is because air actually has weight. We don't think of that. We think of air as something we can move through rather easily without, without it impeding our motion. You walk across the room and you don't think of the air as getting in your way. But the air actually is fairly substantive. And it has a significant amount of weight. And so the air down here has the weight of all the air up above it pushing down on it. So the air down low is squeezed into a smaller space and it's more dense. The air is thicker and it's thinner or more rarefied as you go up to higher altitudes. At a higher altitude, the air right here, for example, doesn't have nearly as much air on top pushing down on it. So it's not compressed nearly as much. So the atmosphere is thicker. It's more dense down close to the Earth. And it thins out as you go up. Well, how high does it go? That's, um, that's a, kind of a matter of definition. Some people would say the atmosphere would go up about 40 or 50 miles. Some people would say 100 miles or maybe 200. Even at 200 miles, there are some faint traces of hydrogen. But at 200 miles, you're basically considered to be in space. And the space shuttle orbits the Earth at about 200 miles. But there's just a little tiny bit of atmosphere up there. And left at an orbit at 200 miles, the orbit would gradually decay due to friction. And an object can't orbit at that altitude forever without being boosted periodically. 
So, so even at 200 miles, there's a tiny bit of atmosphere. But most people would say the atmosphere is basically about 50 or 100 miles thick. That's really not very thick. If you picture the Earth and you compare it to an apple, the thickness of the atmosphere around the Earth compared to the thickness of the Earth itself is thinner than the thickness of the apple peel compared to the thickness of the apple. So the Earth's atmosphere is really this very thin layer, relatively speaking, around the Earth. And it's, it's the most dense closest to the Earth. And as you go up in altitude, the air thins out.